good morning. Here it is mid-February, headed down to the Keys. Uh, my niece Hannah's getting married. She's marrying Doug. Um, and so I decided to make a, a road trip out of it, take a, a couple weeks. A uh, week headed down and a week back. Uh, first stop is going to be the uh, KOA in um, Perry, Florida, just across the border. Getting, and it's a good good timing too. It's getting it was a little cold in uh, Florida and Tennessee, getting down in the 20s at night. So it's, it's already up in the mid 60s here uh, on, on the way down. So uh, hitting a few places. Uh, S Stephen Foster Cultural State Park in Florida, the Everglades in Florida, uh, an Army Corps campground uh, uh, down by Lake Seminole. And uh, then on to the Keys, on the Sugarloaf Key and the KOA there. Tried to get reservations, still trying to get reservations at some of the state parks down there in the Keys. Boy, that's impossible. They booked those things up two years in advance. So it'll be an educational trip. Um, uh, on the way back, going to hit Olino, Olino State Park and another Army Corps place uh, up at the border of Georgia and Florida. East, East Bank, I think is the name of that one. So stick around, should be interesting. See, see some new places and learn some things about uh, how to camp and how not to camp down in Florida. Uh, and I tried to make reservations way early and still couldn't get them all. So we'll, we'll see how this turns out. Perry KOA, uh, Perry, Florida. Uh, okay, 50 some odd dollars a night. I thought it was a little high, considering you're packed right on top of one another. But that's that was for this little pull-in, pull-through site. Of course, that's about the only site they had left when I made the reservations about a month ago. The uh, restrooms are under reconstruction. They must have been damaged, or they're building new. Looked like there was some storm damage around here. Beautiful trees, though. The old oaks with the Spanish moss hanging from them. And they have some cabins for rent, spaced in between the RVs. That's kind of odd, but what the heck? Hey, it'll do for two nights until I can get over to Stephen Foster's uh, State Park. Sure, nice to be down in 70 degree weather for a change. It'll do. Well, we arrived at Stephen Foster Folk Cultural Center State Park. I think that's the name. A lot of Spanish moss and a palm tree. I'm not exactly sure what this is. Oh, well, it's the Stephen Foster Museum. Well, check this out. The azaleas are popped out. A magnolia tree there behind it. Let's find out what this guy is. Turns out it's the Stephen Foster Campanile. I'll explain later. Well, I think. I think this is my site. Uh, I'm here at 12 o'clock. They say no check-in till 3, so they may throw me out of here. But this uh, this is site number 2, and according to my email, it says 002, so I'm assuming this is it. Hell of a site. Everybody's well spaced out. Nice park. I think it was 30-some bucks a night. This is, <laughs> this, this is the way to camp. This is not bad. Now the inside of the uh, Stephen Foster Museum. And they have windows themed after all of his songs. It's pretty cool. My old Kentucky home.
Mike's room. Well, those do look like ivory keys. Are the some pianos? I don't know. They don't uh, say where they're from. Well, that's pretty much it for the museum. That wing's closed. There's supposed to be a craft show around here somewhere. Fiber arts, gourd art, and pottery and woodworking. Craft village. Let's see if we can find that. Had to look this one up. Campanile is a freestanding Italian bell tower. And inside the Campanile, I guess that's the way you pronounce it, I got another display here. I don't feel like I'm alone in this place. What a nice park. And some of his history and family. Andrew Carnegie, 1902 Grand Piano. Walnut was presented to the Stephen Foster Center by Mrs. Robert Roberts. Well, I do believe this must be the Craft Village. See which one of these uh, cottages are open and what kind of crafts they have there. What a great park. Well, the rustic wood crafts, fiber arts, and gourds. Let's see what this is about. Come in. Oh, well, hello. I was just standing there. You guys mind if I film any of this? No. Is that okay? Okay. Cracker Jack box. Isn't that something? Yeah. This, these are great. These little I've never GoPros. Seen one like that. No. Yeah, it's a little just a little action camera. Oh. And it's uh say, say hi everybody. Hi. Well, I'm working on the gourd bird houses. I've just finished cleaning out this one as good as I can. The birds get to clean out the rest. It will end up looking like an apple gourd because it's cute. Is apple gourd. These are apple gourds. I do gourds, I do baskets. Some of my baskets are over there on the shelf. And that's pretty much what I'm doing here as a volunteer. So you guys are all volunteers, you just come and do this out of the love for the art, huh? Yes. Yep. That is what we do. Yes. Been doing this about forty years. Knitting, my wife would have loved you. <laughs> oh, that's she loved this stuff. I'm a rustic furniture maker. I make the bent wood chairs and everything with the bark on it. I go cut up from North Missouri, mainly willows along rivers and streams. Bring them back, leave the bark on them while they're still green. I bend and shape them into the pieces. These are some I brought down to make walking sticks. Draw a knife, the bark off, and then I wood burn different pictures and things on them. And I'm working cool. on, yeah, there's, it's got tracks and everything. They're kind of fun to do. And I'm also taking some gourds, and I cut the bottom out, clean them out. There's a gourd. And then I'm making what I call a thunder gourd. Well, there's one over there. I just put the finish on it. Beautiful. And here's one that's all done, and here's why it's called a thunder gourd. So what do, you, what do you have inside that's making the... Nothing inside. It's just that spring. I oh, a spring. A membrane. Okay. And that's vibrating, that making vibrating. and echoing in the... Comes okay. outside through the holes. Now that's a higher... They're all a little bit different sounding. Here's... Let's see. This is probably a deeper sound here because it's bigger.
amazing. Hey, Pat, what do you, you what, are you making anything? I see you're making booties or, or moccasins. Here. Yeah, with some real slippers. big yarn that goes real fast to make them. Um, I like making these little soap scrubby things. They're kind of abrasive. Either like abrasive or real soft, one or the other. No. There's a reversible headband here for a hunter, either fluorescent or camel. And this is good for somebody up north. Um, got pockets in it. It's extra heavy right at the head and at the pocket part. Ooh, that's kind of my thing. Almost look like snow boots, these guys. Yeah, those are supposed to look like high top tennis shoes. Oh, I They're see. slippers. I got you. <laughs> Cute. Well, thank you, everyone. Yeah. Well, no, you just, play. yeah, just do what you were doing. Uh, okay. We're going to play it with Go Tell Aunt Brody. This is, this is her third song she's ever played on the dulcimer. So here we go. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, wait. Two, two. And one, am I going to use my thumb on one? No, I, I wouldn't like use. I, I no, no, I wouldn't. No, no, no one gonna, is there. Okay, I'm ready. Okay, ready, mm -hmm. go. One. But, uh, it's fine. I've been in here a lot lately and I was getting tired of it. Um, are you familiar with pottery and how it's made? Uh, I watched the movie uh, Ghost with the uh, <laughs> dog. Okay, sometimes I'll center my claim that way. Yeah, I don't, it's not quite that erotic when I do it. <laughs> oh, so, so something's missing. Yeah, yeah, I know. This is the process that the clay goes through. Here's some. that I would, I mostly throw on the wheel. So this is the clay that I would throw. And when it dries thoroughly, it looks like this. You can see it really starts right. to change colors. Lightens up. I don't have any pieces like that, but it's, it's called greenware. Um, and anywhere from here to here, I can still reuse this. You know, if I had a piece and it dried all the way and I thought, I don't like that, I could still um, reclaim it and use it again. When it's totally dry, which is these are, um, then I put it in the kiln to bisque fire it. And it'll look like this, and that's what those pieces are. They've been bisque fired. But these are still somewhat porous, and if I put these in water for long enough, they would still disintegrate. Um, so they've got to have glaze on it. Glaze. Mm -hmm. Now I fire at a mid-range, which is a fairly high temperature. Um, you can. It's possible to fire at a lower, much lower temperature. Uh, the stuff that's like paint your own pottery, that's fired at a much lower temperature. But it's not always um, as functional. It, um, it's, it's still very brittle, isn't it? I mean, yeah. if you yeah. yeah. So, but you have a lot more control over what you do. You know, you can paint pictures. What right. you paint, it's like what you see is what you get. Painting with a glaze. Right. What, that's not always the case when you get to higher temperatures. But these are some of the glazes that I, well, I haven't used that one yet. But um, this is some of the glazes. What I like is that, see this bottle? It's black. Oh. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. What you see is not what you get. Um, so I paint those on, and that's a first for me. I've never done that before. I always dip it in big vats. Um, so it's taken, there's a learning curve there, quite a learning curve. So after I've glazed them, and I did a glaze firing, or after I put this on, back in the kiln, I fired it to 20, almost 2200 degrees, I think. Um, and then I get the finished pieces. And a lot of lining furs. Oh, and then the clay looks like that. That's this is a piece um, of the of unglazed, uh, but it's um, it has that speckled. That's the raw clay. 
So one thing I've learned is that this glaze has to be put on really thick. This is the same as this, is the same as this, and the same as that bowl over there. So I put it on thicker this time. I love that part. Um, and then this is the same glaze as this, but I found out I had to put it on a whole lot thicker. <laughs> lavender. That's a it's fun. great hobby. It looks like you do good yeah, work. It's fun. Yeah, it takes a lot of stuff. And, and I, what's your name? Laura. Oh, Laura. Sorry. Laura. Laura. Well, thank you. thank you for the pottery lesson, Laura. Well, Moore Haven KOA, right off 27, here just outside of Moore Haven, uh, south side of Okeechobee. Well, the, the people are nice, but I don't know why this is a KOA. Here, right on top of one another. It'll do for the night till I get over to the Army Corps. Anxious to see their uh, their uh, campground. Couldn't get couldn't get there tonight, uh, or I could get there, but they uh, didn't have any spots. So that seems to be the trend of the nice places here in Florida. And this place is just about out of spots too. Left the uh, Moorhaven KOA and headed over to the Ortana Army Corps of Engineers campground. Uh, that video will be coming up next week along with the Everglades. Hope you're enjoying the videos. Uh, it was pretty fun and educational for me. So I hope you'll hang around for the upcoming videos and the rest of the trip. See you later.